Uh, we will um, go directly to the fourth uh, session. Myself, my name is Dr. Musa Abdamlaj. I'm a consultant in hematology and stem cell transplant and King Abdelaziz Medical City. And uh, with me, Dr. Ayman Hijazi, also consultant and section head at uh, King Abdelaziz Medical City. Uh, we'll be moderating the fourth session this evening. Uh, we will have uh, four excellent speakers and five presentations. Um, Dr. Ayman uh, will begin uh, introducing the first speaker. Thank you, Dr. Musab. Um, uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, it's the last session, hopefully, in an hour or so. Uh, we'll be done by uh, this meeting, and there is a satellite symposium after that. So uh, the first speaker is uh, Dr. Stefano uh, uh, Luminari. He was presented previously, but he's a professor of medical oncology at the University of Modino, Modena and uh, Reggio Emilia and head of the unit. Uh, for clinical research in co-hematology at hematology division, also Regio Emilia in Italy. So his talk is uh, going to be about peripheral uh, T in case cell lymphoma. Uh, Dr. Luminari, screen is yours. Thank you. Thank you again for the nice introduction. I hope you are able to see my screen and to hear my voice. So once again, thank you for inviting me to give you the second lecture today. Uh, that is about the updates from the ICML uh, about peripheral T cell and NK uh, lymphoma. I will try to cover the six uh, oral presentation uh, that were presented at this meeting. So just to start very quickly, the first study I think is, was one of the most interesting uh, contribution in this uh, session. It was a randomized study conducted by the Chinese group uh, about comparison of two regimens for the treatment of uh, uh, early stage NK T cell lymphomas. Also favored by the good epidemiology of this disease in, in the East, uh, Eastern country, uh, they worked a lot in, with this disease. And uh, uh, I think that probably they're the only group that is able to produce randomized data in this setting. So that's contributing in advancement in the management. Uh, so they started from analyzing what was available uh, when the study was designed in terms of uh, regimens. Uh, as you know, um, NK T cell lymphoma are not uh, suitable for treatment with anthracycline based therapy. They need asparaginase, uh, and uh, this agent should be added to a combined uh, chemotherapy regimen. Uh, they basically looked at the MESA, that is uh, methotrexate, desametazone, etoposide, and asparaginase, and they identified an alternative regimen that uh, is ESA, uh, that is uh, MESA without methotrexate, that compared to ESA is uh, likely more effective based on retrospective data, less toxic, and is mostly oral with the only exception of asparaginase, and is more uh, convenient for the patient and for the hospital. They compare in a randomized fashion. Uh, the design is shown here, one-to-one -one randomization of the novo stage one, two, and KT cell lymphomas uh, between the two regimens. Uh, patient with at least uh, a stable disease uh, proceeded to the sandwich program of radiation therapy and again uh, were treated with the same regimen as induction and then sent to follow up. This was a non-inferiority design uh, of a randomized study. Uh, 248 patients were enrolled and randomized. The clinical characteristics are shown here. The study arm were well balanced between the, the two uh, regimens. And if you look at the primary outcome, was basically a complete response. Uh, you see that the primary endpoint was met with a 80% complete response rate achieved with ESA and 78.9% achieved with MESA. And the same applies all to, to the all other um, uh, activity measures. And also, if you look at the secondary outcome, mainly progression-free survival and overall survival, again, no main difference between the two uh, study arms. Uh, conversely, the difference was uh, it's there in terms of the safety profile. The safety profile of the ESA regimen was significantly better uh, compared to the MESA with significant reduction in terms of leukopenia, neutropenia, uh, mucositis, and uh, uh, other uh, uh, hematologic and non-hematologic adverse events, suggesting that uh, based on this study, 
ESA treatment should be now considered as the standard approach to early stage NKT cell lymphomas. The second study is a study presented by Dr. Dreger uh, from Germany, uh, who consulted the, uh, prospective, uh, the, the prospective registry of the ABMT um, uh, transplant and the CIBMRT uh, to assess and to compare the groups of patients with peripheral T cell lymphoma that receive an allogenic transplant uh, according and compare and to try to define differences in terms of uh, efficacy and toxicity of the different sources of the, the bone marrow, those comparing identical versus matched donor uh, groups. Uh, these are the results of this huge study, 1942 uh, patients enrolled uh, divided into this group, identical matched sibling, uh, MUD with the T cell depletion and without T cell de uh, depletion. Uh, the groups are clearly shown here, very well comparable. Uh, patients who were received identical transplant were probably uh, more um, frail as uh, showed by the 42% of the ACO performance status higher than one and more frequently treated with the uh, bone marrow as a source of stem cell transplant. In terms of acute uh, graft source disease, uh, they observed that uh, Treat, patient treated with a identical uh, transplant were associated with a reduced risk of graft versus of disease in the first 10 uh, hundred days. Uh, in terms of non-relapse mortality, no significant difference was observed uh, between the, the different groups of, of therapy. And also in terms of overall survival, no significant difference was observed in terms of PFS and OS uh, among the four groups, suggesting as the conclusion uh, highlights, that apple identical uh, allogenic stem cell transplant uh, should be considered a, as a, a good source, a good uh, uh, treatment for a relapsed refractory uh, patient, considering that uh, allogenic stem cell transplant is probably the only curative option, even if not very uh, active and not easy to perform in relapsed patient with uh, uh, peripheral T cell lymphomas. The third study is a phase one, two study of DZT4205, that is a selective JEK1 inhibitor tested in relapsed refractory peripheral T cell lymphoma presented by uh, Dr. Kim. Uh, the rationale behind this study is uh, uh, the availability of DZA, DZD4205 as an orally available potent second generation JEK inhibitor with high selectivity and uh, can that is rational to use in peripheral T cell lymphoma due to the uh, involvement of the JAK pathway, JAK stat pathway in the pathogenesis of the disease. Uh, this is the design of the study. Uh, I will not go too much into detail. It's a phase one study of a novel agent. And the novel, the activity uh, shown by the study uh, was in favor of some kind of uh, uh, activity as the, documented by an overall 47.6 overall response rate uh, with complete response rates observed in uh, uh, different rates across the, the peripheral T cell subtypes uh, being higher in uh, than more active in uh, patients with angiomonoblastic T cell lymphoma with a complete response rate of 26.3%. And in terms of the safety, 23.4% uh, of the patient experienced uh, uh, neutropenia. Uh, uh, however, the safety profile was considered manageable uh, without uh, significant uh, uh, adverse events associated with the treatment. The third study is about uh, lacutamab in the patients with mycosis fungoides uh, that was delivered according to the expression of KIR3DTDL2. Uh, that is a phase two study presented by Dr. Bago. Uh, Lacutamab is an inhibitor of KIR3DL2 that is uh, considered the res is receptor that is uh, shown to be expressed by approximately 50% of the patient with mycosis fungoides and with more than 90% of patients with Cesare syndrome. Uh, this study that was presented here was part of a larger experience, larger study with different cohorts. The cohort with Cesare syndrome patient was already uh, presented, confirming efficacy. In this, at this meeting, core two and core three were presented, core two and core three being different 
uh, a, because from the court one because they were mycosis fungoides and the difference between court two and court three was mainly based on different rate of expression of kir 3 dl 2 in the tissue more than one percent or less than one percent these are the characteristics of the patients uh, divided by cohort uh, similar characteristics and no significant difference uh, uh, these are patients with relapsed refractory disease uh, and with uh, a significant amount of disease uh, as documented by nodal involvement, uh, blood involvement in a significant in a number of patients. With probably more patients with uh, uh, disseminated disease uh, as observed in the core two with higher level of ki 3 dl 2 expression. Uh, responses were observed in both groups. So this is the group uh, cohort two with higher expression of the receptor KI3DL2. Uh, looking at the skin response, uh, the patient with skin involvement, most of the patients showed the reduction in the skin involvement, and one patient out of the 17 subjects achieved a complete response, 8 PR and two unconfirmed PR. Responses were also seen in four out of seven patients with blood involvement and one out of eight with lymph node involvement. And regarding core three, uh, less marked response were observed in this uh, patient uh, with only two PR observed among the 19 patients with the skin involvement. Uh, safety uh, details are shown here. Grade three and four event were not frequent uh, and uh, uh, most of the events were uh, uh, of grade of uh, grade of one and two, and mostly represented by asthenia and nausea. And in only one case, a grade three event caused discontinuation of treatment. Uh, this, the other study is multicenter phase two study, oromidepsin plus lenalidomide. This is very interesting because this phase two study was applied to patients with previously untreated peripheral T-cell lymphoma. So the patient never received any treatment. This study was presented by uh, Dr. Ruan. Uh, the agent investigated in this study was an HDAC inhibitor romidepsin with the name it that is lenalidomide. Both agents showed uh, activity as single agent in relapsed refractory setting and the in combination again in relapsed refractory setting. So the hypothesis was that this combination could be also effective in first line therapy. Uh, this is the schema of the, the, the treatment that was uh, uh, adopted in these patients. Lenalidomide was uh, given uh, at standard 25 doses for 21 days after each, every 28 days. Romidepsin was administered on day one, day eight, and day 15 of a 28 days cycle for up to one year. Uh, the patient enrolled are, were 29. Uh, 20 patients were shown with available and were available. Uh, for the meeting. Uh, uh, these are the characteristics. Uh, uh, 13 patients had angiomonoblastic T-cell lymphoma, six patients peripheral T-cell lymphoma in OS, one patient ATLL. The age was elevated in 80% of the patients. So these are uh, the typical patient with peripheral T-cell lymphoma. Looking at the adverse event, the, the combination was not very safe in terms of the number of events, if you look at the grade, uh, events grade higher than grade three, you see a significant amount of neutropenia, 45%, thrombocytopenia, 38%, and anemia, 28%, and with 10% of infection and sepsis and other uh, infectious uh, events that are shown here in the left. Other non hematological events were observed quite frequently hypertension, 38% uh, of the patients. Uh, uh, fatigue, 70%, uh, and uh, the, the complete list is shown here uh, for the value that you can, has, uh, can have for uh, 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 an overview of a small number of patients. In terms of objective responses, I think these are the very interesting data because remember, this is first line, patient never treated. Uh, overall, uh, 15 out of the 20 valuable patients achieved a response that was complete in 30% of the subjects. Uh, uh, and that was uh, 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 relatively higher for the patient with angiomonoblastic T-cell lymphomas, 38% compared to PTCL and OS. A small number, but I think interesting studies, interesting data. And uh, if you look at the progression-free survival, the median progression-free survival was uh, 
uh, reported to be uh, 1.19 years for the old patient, clear PFS 36.2%, and it was 1.83 uh, years uh, in the patient with eye and germinoblastic T-cell lymphoma with the two-year median, uh, with the two-year PFS rates of 39.6%. Then promising result that I think that suggests further investigation of this combination for the first-line therapy of the peripheral T-cell lymphoma patients. And uh, the last contribution was uh, presented by Dr. Ovitz from uh, the, the, the Memorial Sloan Kettering, uh, a combination of duvelizib and romidepsin. Uh, so a PI3 kinase inhibitor and an HDAC inhibitor in relapsed refractory peripheral T-cell lymphoma. Uh, the background uh, is, uh, again, uh, in favor of the, uh, this reporting the activity of the two uh, drugs uh, using a single agent in peripheral T-cell lymphomas uh, and uh, in the possibility to combine them uh, in, a, uh, in a phase two study and a phase one study. Uh, the design of the study is shown here. There are two arms, non-randomized. The arm A was duvelizib plus uh, romidepsin, so PI3 kinase plus HTAC inhibitor. Arm B is duvelizib plus bortezomib, but the arm B was not uh, shown here. And uh, in the arm I, was, there was also uh, a group of patients that received single-edged duvelizib as lead-in cycle before starting uh, the combination therapy. The primary point was to define as a phase one, the maximum tolerated dose, but secondary objective also included the analysis of overall response rate and complete response rate. Uh, 66 patients were enrolled in those in uh, arm A. The clinical characteristics are shown here. 62 years median age, 64% uh, were male. Uh, 13 patients were previously treated with autologous, 10 patient neurologic transplant, and uh, the different subtypes of the peripheral T-cell lymphoma included is shown here, 55% of the nodal lymphoma uh, or a cutaneous lymphoma uh, with nodal involvement, and 11 patients had the primary cutaneous uh, T-cell lymphoma, mycosis fungoides of Cesare syndrome. Uh, looking at the results by dose level, uh, three dose level were tested uh, with the romidepsin fixed dose of 10 milligrams per square meter, IV and duvelizib from 25 milligrams to 75 milligrams uh, in from moving from dose level one to dose level three. Uh, overall, you see there were uh, responses uh, seen in all groups, even the, if the, the, the groups are small, 50% those level one, 66%, those level two, and a more interesting 54% overall response rate and 37% uh, overall response, uh, complete response rate in those level uh, three patients. And uh, uh, looking at response by peripheral T-cell lymphoma subtypes, the, the results are shown here. Overall, 58% of the peripheral T-cell lymphoma uh, achieved an overall response. Uh, and 40 a complete response rate, and PTCL patients overall were associated with a, an overall response rate of 56%, that I think is very uh, promising considering uh, how difficult it is to manage uh, to, set, to get a response in a relapsed refractory peripheral T-cell lymphoma. And uh, finally, progression free survival curves are shown here for both PTCL and cutaneous T-cell lymphomas, the media PFS, uh, it was 6.9 months in PTCL and 50.5, sorry, 5.5 months in cutaneous T-cell lymphomas. And uh, given the ability, the possibility to achieve a significant amount of uh, uh, complete responders, uh, responses in peripheral T-cell lymphoma, patients with achieving complete response were, uh, uh, were likely sent to transplant. This was feasible. It was done in 15 patients. There was one, uh, approximately one third of the patients. So in conclusion, the combination is considered uh, uh, active with the, 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 uh, the response rates that I described before. And the combination of the two agents is considered feasible uh, with the manageable uh, safety profile and uh, with higher activity compared to the data, the historical data of single agent duvelizib. Uh, with this, I, I finished the uh, overview of uh, this contribution about peripheral T-cell lymphoma. And I'm happy to take questions if there are some from the chair or from the audience. Thank you very much.
Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Luminari, for this uh, elegant presentation and choosing the nice abstracts. Um, um, I don't think uh, if there is any uh, questions, uh, I cannot uh, read them from here, but uh, <clears throat> I have a question. It seems that the uh, addition of rimidopsin is uh, interesting in uh, treating T-cell lymphomas. The uh, combination of rimidopsin and lenalidomide um, is showing um, uh, at least promising results uh, in the abstract. Uh, I mean, do you think in the future would uh, would be an option rather than our CHOWIP or uh, adding any of those uh, agents or comparing at least the results of our CHOWIP or uh, sorry CHOWIP to uh, Romidopsum and Leonidamide? Is that something that you think will really uh, uh, be um, a replacement? Yeah, it's not easy to drive conclusion based on a small study, but I think it's pivotal and it's very interesting to see that it is possible to achieve responses and good responses in first line with a chemo-free option. Uh, you should remember, however, that romidepsin, even if active in sing a single agent and also in combination, has been added to CHOP uh, by the French group and uh, um, results were not positive in all comers, with some suggestion that uh, a better activity was seen in angiomonoblastic T-cell lymphoma. There are more uh, um, dependent on the epigenetic alterations uh, that uh, the, the pathogenesis of the disease. So I, the answer to your question is difficult, but the answer is probably yes, at least we should try. But the best way to try is not to consider all comers for PTCL, but we work on specific subgroups. Now it's clear enough that uh, there is a cell of origin also for peripheral T-cell lymphoma, and the best cell of origin for romidepsin is likely to be angiomonoblastic T-cell lymphoma with the T follicular helper uh, cell subtype. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Luminari. I guess uh, we'll uh, go ahead with the next speaker. Thank you.